From New York, it's that Kevin show. See, I knew it. Ah, uh, come on, Kev. What's a few classified documents between friends? I told you. I told you all the time. I knew it. I knew he had some, too. Here he is. That Kevin. Kevin McCullough. Welcome back to Times Square. Kevin McCullough, very glad to have you with us. Um, I just have to ask, if you were to hear this all by itself, how would you respond? Take a listen. She is our guest. I'm asking all of us to honor the rules that they have asked us to honor, or they, they, will, they will institute. But I'm asking all of us to use our moral obligation to each other to not protest inside the hall. I can't force you. I can just ask you. And I'm asking us, this is the first female African-American AAPI candidate for the presidency of the United States. Even if we disagree with something that she says, let's remember the press in the United States, that they will zero in on the disagreement instead of the broad swath of agreement there's, there is. Let's do for this moment, I'm asking you, let us morally support our sister as she is in the hall tomorrow. That is Randy Weingarten, the head of the um, largest teachers unions. Uh, and she was preparing, prepare ye the way of Kamala Harris, who was uh, to speak at the convention for the uh, National Federation of Teachers the next day. I, I am I'm blown away at, first of all, many of the dishonest things that she said there, but just the whole way she's just like not even trying to pretend that she's not rigging the outcome of the event that Kamala Harris would be at. Uh, here to discuss this and other educational related issues is Angela Morbido. She was the press secretary for the Department of Education under Donald Trump. And uh, she joins us as a visiting fellow for the Independent Women's Forum, one of my favorite organizations. Angela, it's good to have you with us. Thank you for being here. It is great to be with you. Thank you for having me, Kevin. When you heard Randy Weingarten, who I want to remind my viewers and listeners uh, kind of single-handedly kept all of our kids in masks and six feet apart and in desks that uh, had the weird funky divider things on them uh, for way longer than was ever necessary in school and kept them from going to school for a long time. That Randy Weingarten, when you heard her say that, what went through your head? Teacher unions just continue to prove time and again that they're not there for students and families. They're not even really there for their teacher members. They exist for more money and more political power. So you hear Randy Weingarten talking to these uh, convention attendees like they're children and essentially saying, behave yourselves. And it is uh, really just proves that Randy and her union are there to support a certain political agenda, and they don't really care what their teacher members think. You wrote in your piece that is on the Independent Women's Forum website, iwf.org, about this particular convention, and you called it a pep rally for Kamala Harris. Um, this, this, is, this is them going all in on what's supposed to be a politically neutral organization. They're not, they're not supposed to take sides. Um, their, their membership may not be Democrat or Republican or independent or anybody else. They're supposed to be solving the problems with education as it relates to the teachers being able to organize. How, how did they get so far askew? Well, the larger teacher union movement used to be 100 years ago. It was about professionalizing the one room schoolhouse. It was about making sure teachers had the tools that they needed to give a professional education to, to children, again, largely in very small settings in very small towns. But now over time, teacher unions have realized that they could leverage their power to drive a political and social agenda into schools. And that's exactly what they do. This teacher union didn't spend a lot of time, if any, talking about learning loss, math and reading scores, just devastating test results. Instead, they talk about things like climate change and racial justice and things that don't matter to students and don't help them learn. The interesting thing about all of that is that they are deadly afraid, or they seem to be, 
of anybody who will actually focus on education. Now, Angela, you you served uh, in the Trump uh, administration. You saw a an approach to education that differed from this mentality. Size up these two presidential tickets for us and kind of compare and contrast what their differences will be. Well, I love that question because these two tickets that Americans will be deciding between come November could not be more different on the issue of education. I, I very proudly served under Secretary DeVos during the Trump administration. I was there when COVID hit, and that was a front row seat to history. And I saw how what we were doing was working. It was go all in on school choice, education, freedom, give families a way out of failing schools. And what the opposite opposing ticket wants to do is exactly the opposite. They are saying, stick kids where they are, government assigned, you know, residentially assigned schooling that is all managed by the government. They support the teacher unions having a virtually a monopoly on public education in this country. And their only answer to the pervasive problems in education is just throw more money at it. But we know that throwing more money at a failing system just gets you a better funded failing system. It doesn't make the difference that students desperately need. Well, you're you're a little bit nice in how you say that. I say it enriches those that are making it a failing system. <laughs> Um, I believe you're right. Fat cats at the top of the uh, at yes. the top of the totem pole seem to have nicer cars, bigger houses, uh, more guarantee of longer ability to hold the job that they have. And if that was you or I in the private sector, uh, having to produce widgets or uh, services or or whatever else, and and we failed as badly as the current administ or the current educational system is failing, particularly in our more clogged cities, um, we would all be out of work. And Angela, I don't understand how they continue to get to do these things and continue to so underwhelmingly perform. This is the power of the unions in action because they take every available opportunity to erase accountability measures. The unions are first in line to fight to abolish graduation tests because they know they can't defend their results. The typical public school is not serving students. It's actually doing a really terrible job. But unions know it is a threat to their power if the American public figures that out. So that is why they fight against testing. They fight to make teacher evaluations so lax. It's essentially a rubber stamp that says you're doing great, even if you're doing terrible. I, I joke with my dad, who is a long-suffering uh, football fan, that if anyone else was paid so much, uh, the only people, sorry, who are paid more than teacher unions to fail at their jobs are called the New York Jets. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, we we do have some Jets fans that watch. Um, but uh, yes, I, Sorry, I think that you're right. Yeah. No, you, well, you're speaking the truth. Um, we're going to take a break and come back. The, the, this election is going to be decided on, on a broad scale of issues. Um, the educational issue itself has not really pushed its way to the fore, but there are a lot of things that touch the educational arena that Independent Women's Forum uh, certainly is touching on. And I want to get into this because now that Kamala Harris has named her vice president, um, it seems as though if a Harris Walls administration is empowered uh, to run the country for four years, that our children are very much at risk in ways that I don't think my grandparents or parents would have ever imagined. As the father of uh, school-aged children myself, I can barely fathom that it's happening now, and yet it is all around us. You were also part of the IWF uh, Title IX bus tour. We'll get into a little Stick bit. Stick around for more of That Kevin next. That Kevin Show with Kevin McCullough.